Hello and good day again everybody so welcome again to this video and for this video we will be continuing where we left off and we will now be having a sample problem in solving for the base shear using static force procedure. So in this problem a 15 story commercial building with roof deck will be constructed in Bonifacio Street, Baguio City. So according to the geotechnical investigation the soil where the building will be constructed is said to be a very dense soil. So when we say a very dense soil its shear wave velocity would be as follows it would be 500 meters per second and the weight per floor is estimated to be 1950 kilonewtons. So the roof deck weighs less at about 1600 kilonewtons so it would be less than 1950. So we will now be solving for the base shear using static force procedure. And side note, the structure will be a special moment resisting steel frame. Okay, so all of these are of vital importance. So it is said here in the problem that we would be having a 15-story commercial building and I would be representing it with this. So we have 15 floors plus the roof deck. So in order for us to solve for the base shear using static force procedure, of course, we must know the formulas that we will be needing. So we will be needing this, this, and this. So we will be, I mean, we will still check if it, if we would still be needing this equation. Okay, so um, just like what I have said in the previous video that in solving for the base shear, of course, we must solve for all of these parameters first. So we have the value for the importance factor. Um, the total weight, the overstrength factor, the seismic coefficients, and uh, what else? And the others. Okay, so let's go um, one by one. So for the importance factor I, so given in the problem, it is said here that we are to have a 15-story commercial building. So if it is a commercial building going to this particular table, so these are the importance factors. So if it is an essential facility, it will it will be 1.5. If it is a hazardous facility, it is 1.25. And if it is neither both, we will be making use of one. And since in our structure, it is said to be a commercial building, it is neither an essential facility nor an hazardous facility. So it will be 1.0 so we would not be making use of 1.5 and 1.25 and regardless if it is occupancy category 3 4 or 5 we will be making use of 1.0 and by the way a commercial building is a standard occupancy structure okay so one down so we already have the value for the importance factor and that is 1.0 and as for the weight so like what I have said last video that for the weight this is basically the total dead load or the total weight of the building so for the total weight of the building, so it is said here that for every floor, its weight is estimated to be 1950 kilonewtons. So per floor, 1950, 1950, 1950, and etc. up until the first floor, of course. And for the roof deck, it is said here that it is weighing less and it is about 1600. So this is 1600. So I would not um, show the solution here any longer. Just look at the calculator to your left. So for the total weight of the floor, so 1,950. So this is to be um, the weight per floor. And we will now be multiplying this by the number of floors. So since we have 15 stories or 15 floors, we will be multiplying this by 15. So times 15. So that is just for the floors and we would be adding 1,600 for the roof deck itself. So plus 1,600 equals, so the total weight, so total weight W is equal to 30850 kilonewtons, so 30,850 kilonewtons. So 30850 kilo. Newtons. So there. So about for our overstrength factor. So for our overstrength factor, this is dependent upon what kind of structural system the building would be having. So in here, it is said that the structure will be a special moment resisting steel frame. So for uh, SMRF, that is a steel. So we will be making use of table. So um, it would be this, I think. No. Okay, so for table 208-11A, 
these are the values for R if, of course, the structure is concrete. But once again, in our building, we will be making use of steel, steel members. And thus, we will be making use of this, of course. So, earthquake force resisting structural system of steel. Okay, so we will be, I mean, we will be searching for SMRF or the special moment resisting frame that is steel. And it is over here. So, special moment resisting frame or SMRF that is, of course, a steel. So, this is on table 208-11B. And with such, we will be making use of 8.0 as the value for R. So, we already have 3. So, we already have 3 variables and we still have 2. So, 8.0. Oh, so, this is unitless. Okay, so what about for our seismic coefficient C A and C V? So for our seismic coefficient C A and C V, we will be making use of this table. No, not that. So I, we would be making use of this table. So as you can see, that this table is dependent upon the seismic zone and the soil profile type. So for the seismic zone, so this is dependent upon the location of the building, and according to the problem. So, according to the problem that it is located in Bonifacio Street, Baguio City. So, once again, we have two zones here in the Philippines, namely Zone 4 and Zone 2. And as you know, and if you do not know, Baguio City is approximately located in this area, which is clearly located in Zone 4. And thus, Zone 4. So, we will be making use of this columns so that one and this one okay so post note that in my previous video i erroneously copied uh, the table for seismic coefficient so if by chance that you have um taken a screenshot of it make sure to update it because once again the table that i have provided there is erroneous okay so this is the correct table and there so we would be making use of this columns so for the correct row so we, it is dependent upon the soil profile type and the soil profile type can be seen in this table so these are the various soil profile types and it is dependent upon the soil profile okay so going back to the problem so it is indicated here that according to the geotechnical investigation, the soil where the building will be constructed is said to be a very dense soil or its shear wave velocity is equal to 500 meters per second. So going back to this table, so these are the shear wave velocities. And since I have indicated earlier that the shear wave ve velocity is equal to 500, so meaning that it is... um in between 360 and 760 and thus it is a very dense soil and soft rock so it is a very dense soil so meaning we will be making use of soil profile type sc okay so there so going back here the column that i mean the row that we will be making use will be this i should say row did i say row basta row dapat so sc and sc so, in other words, we will be making use of um, 0.4 NA for our seismic coefficient CA and we will be making use of 0.56 NV using our seismic coefficient CV. So, we are not yet done here because, of course, we still need to get the value for NA or NV since we are located in zone 4. So, for the NA and NV, so these are the um, seismic, I mean the near source factor. So this is now dependent upon the magnitude that the fault line can produce and how far from the project is to the nearest fault line or the nearest um, source, seismic source I should say. Okay, so it is indicated in the problem once again that it is located in Bonifacio Street, Baguio City. And in order for us to know the near source factor, uh, we would we would be making use of, let's say, a third-party app. Or if you do not want to make use of a third-party app, just open your NSCPs. And we have there the list of fault lines that you can use. 
and using your skills, so let's say your metric skills, now approximate the location of the building. But since I do not want to do that, and since I already have my computer and my cell phone, which I can um, easily access Fault Finder by Philvox, I would just be making use of it. So this application here is the Fault Finder by Philvox. So I forgot to include the website here. Just Google it. It is very hard to miss. And there. So I have indicated there that my project will be located in Bonifacio Street, Baguio City. And according to Philvox, the nearest fault line that we can map there is the Tubao Fault. So Tubao Fault is located at this portion. And according to that program and according to surveying, um, it is 7.6 kilometers away from it. So 7.6 kilometers. So that is 7.6 kilometers. So once again, going back to this one. So um, once again, it is dependent upon how far or how near it is to that fault line. And it is also dependent upon the seismic source type. So I have already shown you, I mean, I have already indicated that the distance from the fault line is equal to 7.6 kilometers. Okay, so what about for the seismic source type? Because um, since we already know that it is 7.6 kilometers, it is in between this and it is in between this. 7.6 is in between 5 kilometers and 10 kilometers. So what about for the seismic source type? So for the seismic source type, it is given in this table here, which I have already indicated last video that it is dependent upon the magnitude that the fault line can produce. Then going back to this, so uh, this is a screenshot from um, sunstar.com.ph and it is said here that the Tobau fault shakes in magnitude 7.2. So 7.2 magnitude. Okay, so going back here once again. So 7.2 is of course greater than 7.0 and it is less than 8.4, meaning that the seismic source type that we will be using is seismic source type A. So going back here, we will now be making use of this row. Sorry, so this row and this row. Okay, so as you can see that 7.6 kilometers is in between 5 and 10, so meaning that we must interpolate so I will be graphing um, the value for Na. So I will be graphing the value for Na uh, in seismic source type A. Okay, so if I would be graphing the value for Na, so um, for a moment as I will be once again graphing. So let's say that this is the value for the distance and this is the value for Na. So once again, this is Na. And this is the distance. So let's say that this is D. So it is said here that if it is less than or equal to 2 kilometers, meaning that we would be making use of 1.5. So graphing it. So let's say that this is 1.5. So let's say that this is 1.5. And let's say that this is 2 kilometers. So we would be making use of 1.5 up until the 2 kilometer mark, which is at this point. And it is said here at the second row that if it is less than or equal to 5 kilometers, we will now be making use of 1.2. So meaning um, from this point, if from 2 kilometers, so let's say that this is 1.2. And let's say that this is now 5 kilometers. So 5 kilometers, suppose. So this is now what the graph would look like. So from 2 kilometers up until 5 kilometers, we will now be making use of 1.2. Or let's say from 2.000001 up until 5 kilometers, we will be making use of 1.2. So what about for the value for from 5 kilometers up until 10 kilometers? So um, by the way, we do not have values for there yet. Since, of course, once again, this is for values less than or equal to 5 kilometers and these are values for greater than or equal to 10 kilometers so meaning we do not have a value for 7.6 kilometers here so let's suppose that this is now um the 10 kilometer mark 
So it is said here in this um, table that from greater than or equal to 10 kilometer mark, the value here would be 1.0. So this is now 1.0. Once again, this is 1.2. So for us to get the value for um, a distance of 7.6, we can assume that this is linear. So there. So if this is linear, it means that if this is, let's say, um, 7.6, you must get this particular value first. So you must get this value and get its y-coordinate, which is the value for Na. So let's say that this is to be the value for our Na. Okay, so um, the using of interpolation is basically similar triangles. For our interpolation, we would be subtracting 10 kilometers and 5 kilometers. So 10 kilometers minus 5 kilometers divided by what are the respective NAs. So for NA, so the NA for 10 kilometers, that is 1.0. And for 5 kilometers, that is 1.2. So 1.0 minus 1.2. So this is equal to, so it will be up to you if you want this to be your range or you want this to be your range. So regardless, your answer should be the same. So um, for example, that I want this to be my range. So meaning that this should be 7.6 kilometers minus 5 kilometers divided by, so what is the value for Na here? So by the way, that is the one unknown. So this is now Na. So minus, so minus um, what is the value for the Na for 5 kilometers? That is 1.2. So minus 1.2. So there, so from that, guys, we can now solve for the value for Na. So for the value of Na, so by ratio in proportion, so 10 minus 5, so I would be making use of shift solve. So this is equal to 7.6 minus 5 divided by Na minus 1.2. So shift solve. So solving for the value for x, so our Na is now equal to 1.096. So this is the value for our Na. So what about for the value for our Nv? So for the value for our Nv, um, since 7.6 is not included here, so same thing, we would be making use of 5 kilometers and 10 kilometers and we would be checking what is the value for 7.6. So same equation. So I will just be dividing it here. So for our NV, so ratio in proportion once again. For our NV, this is now equal to, so I will be subtracting 10 minus 5. So 10 kilometers minus 5 kilometers divided by the respective NVs. So 1.2 minus 1.6. So this is now equal to, so it will be up to you once again if you want to use 5 and let's say that I want to make use of um, 10 kilometers. So 10 kilometers minus 7.6. So divided by the respective NVs. So the NV for 10 kilometers is 1.2. Minus um, as for the NV of 7.6. We still do not know that. And thus we are solving for it. So NV. So solving for those, NV is now equal to, so 10 minus 5 divided by 1.2 minus 1.6. So equals 10 minus 7.6 divided by 1.2 minus X. So shift solve. So the answer for X or for NV is now equal to, so NV is now equal to 1.3. Nine, two. So this is also unitless. Okay, so with that, so for the value for CA and CV, so going back here, so the value for 
CA that is 0.4 NA and the value for CV is that is 0.56 NV. So for CA, that is 0.4 NA, 0.4 NA. And for CV, that is 0.56 NV. So this is equal to so 0 0.40 times NA. So what is NA once again? And that is 1.096. So 1.096. And as for NV, so the value for NV is equal to 1.392. Okay, so there. So going back here, another um, emphasis here that we only interpolated because 7.6 is not included here. But for example, uh, let's say that um, the nearest source factor is 20 kilometers. So if 20 kilometers, as you can see here, 20 kilometers is greater than or equal to 10 kilometers, and 20 kilometers is greater than 15 kilometers. So respectively, we will be making use of 1.0 and 1.0. So we do not need to interpolate any longer. Um, um, just like for, let's say, if the seismic source type is located, let's say, 3 kilometers away from, let's say, um, the fault line, it means that we will be making use of 1.2 because it is less than or equal to 5 kilometers here. But in here, we will now be interpolating because this is exactly 5 kilometers and this is less than or equal to 2 kilometers. So if, let's say, the seismic source type, I mean, the seismic source is... Um, at a distance of 3 kilometers, we will now be interpolating between these two. But in, I mean, for our NA, we do not need to interpolate them any longer because it is already included in 5 kilometers. Okay, so solving for CA and CV. So for the value for CA, 0.4 times 1.096. So our answer here is equal to 0 0.4384. So 0 0.4384. So that is for the value for CA. So for the value for CV, um, this is equal to so 0.56 times 1.392. So this is equal to 0 0.7795. Okay, so I will just be copying both of these values. So for a moment, so for our CA, which I forgot, 0 0.4384, so 0 0.4384. And for our CV, that is 0 0.7795, so 0 0.7795. So I think we are already complete with these three. But what about for this value? So the question is, do we still need to solve for this value? So short answer to that is yes, because we will be making use of this equation if our project is located in seismic zone 4, which it is. So meaning that aside from these values, we still need to solve for the value for NV, NV I should say, which we already have, and we still need to get the value for Z. So for the value for NV, so we have already solved for that earlier, and that is 1.392. So 1.392. And as for the value for Z, this can be seen in this table. Where is it? So in this table. So table 208-3, page 2-188, but you do not need to get this table any longer because it is easy to memorize. So if your zone is located in 2 or zone 2, Automatic that Z is equal to 0 0.2. So if it is located zone 4, Z is equal to 0 0.4. So easy. So with that, our Z is equal to 0 0.4. Okay, so once again, this is the design base here. This is the maximum base here. This is the minimum base here. And this is the other minimum if it is located in zone 4. Okay, so what to do? Okay, so the next thing that we will be doing, of course, is that we will now be solving for this. So going to this slide, so 
for the design base here, so design v. So design v is equal to, so going back here, I'm sorry. So CVI divided by RT times W. Oh, by the way, we still lack the value for T. So for the value for T or the period, this can be solved using any of this method. So we can use method B or method A. And once again, method A is a lot easier than method B. And we will be making use of this method. So time is equal to CT times HN raised to 3 fourths. So as for CT, this is, I mean, this can be represented by these values. And as for each end, this is the height of the building. With that, guys, so for the value 40, I will just be writing them here. So this is equal to CT times HN raised to 3 fourths. And for CT, so it is either 0 0.0853, 0 0.0731, and 0 0.0488. So it is once again dependent upon what kind of material we will be using. So in here, Still moment resisting frame. So is that applicable to our project? So yes. So meaning that we will be making use of 0 0.0853. So 0 0.0853. And as for the value for HN. So for the value for HN, that is the height of the building or the mean height. Um, I forgot to include here. So I forgot to include here the height per story. So I will now be assuming that the height h is equal to 3.5 meters per floor. So we have 15 stories and then per floor we have 3.5 meters. Apologies for forgetting to include this in the problem. But with that guys, so for us to get the total height, so height is equal to so the number so 3.5 meters per floor then there are 15 floors in total so 15 floors so equal sign so in this guy so 3.5 times 15 so we have a total of 52.5 meters okay so times 52.5 raised to 3 fourths. So period is now equal to. So 0 0.0853 times 52.5. Oops, sorry. 52.5 raised to 3 over 4. So 0 0.0853 times 52.5 raised to 3 fourths. So our period is now 1.664 seconds. So it means that it would take 1.664 seconds for one vibration to finish. So there. And in here, so T is now equal to 1.664 seconds. Okay, so going back once again here, that for our design shear, CV times I divided by RT times W. So substituting known values. So for the value for CV, so that is equal to 0 0.7795. And as for the value for the importance factor, that is 1.0. So times 1.0 divided by R. So R is equal to 8.0 according to the problem. So 8.0. And for the value for T, that is 1.664 seconds. Times, of course, the total weight. And the total weight is 30850. So the design shear is to be equal to. So 0.7795 times 1 divided by 8 times 1.664 times 30850. So our design B shear here is to be 1806.46 kilonewtons. So this is the design B shear. But we must first check if it is um, within the limits. So I would just be making another table here. Maximum. And this is for the minimum. 
Okay, so for the maximum, we will be making use of 2.5 CAI W over R. So V is equal to 2.5 CAI W over R. And I would just be um, writing them, I mean typing them in my calculator. So once again, I will be making use of this equation. So look at the calculator to your left. So 2.5. Times CA, what is CA? That is 0.4384. So 0.4384 times importance factor of 1 times the total weight, which is 30850. So 30850 divided by the value of R, which is 8. So meaning that our maximum is 422. So 4. 426.45 kilonewtons. And as for our minimum, so we have two values. So for our minimum, that is 0.11 CAIW. And so we have two minimums because we are, I mean, the project is located in seismic zone 4. So 0.8 ZNVI. So, 0.8 Z and V, oh, sorry, and V I W over R. So, for our value here, so going back once again to this one. So, solving for this equation, looking at the calculator, 0.11 times CA of 0.4384 times importance factor of 1 times the weight of 30850. So, our answer here is 1487. So, 1487.71 kilonewtons. And for the other minimum, so that is 0.8Z and VI. So, that is 0.8 times Z of 0.4 times and V of 1.392. 1 1.392 times 1.0 divided by R of 8 times W of 30850. Oops. So, times 30850. And the other minimum is 1717. So, 1717. So, these are the minimum and this is the maximum. So, according to our design base shear, that this is, well, the design base shear once again. So, 1806.46. So, it is definitely greater than both of these values. So, greater than. And it is definitely less than the maximum. So, if it is like that, then meaning that we will be making use of this as our design base shear. So, design base shear is equal to 1806.46. So, this is the value for our design base shear. But if, suppose, for example, that the design B shear that we have solved for here is, let's say, equal to 1,300, which is definitely less than 1487.71 and 1717, it means that we will be making use of 1717. So why? Why 1717 and not 1487.71? Because if we will be making use of this, so, we did not satisfy that this is not the minimum. So, um, if we would be making use of 1487.71, then it is already less than 1717. But if we would be making use of 1717, this criteria is still applicable because we should not be less than both of these. So, dapat po hindi sila mas bababa sa dalawang yan. And as for the maximum, for example, that the B shear that you have solved for it is equal to 5,000 kilonewtons, for example. And it is greater than 4226.45. So meaning that for our design B shear, we will be making use of 4226.45. So there. But it is neither less than the minimum nor greater than the maximum. It means that our design shear is in the middle of both. It means that this is the one governing. Okay, so there. And as for the um, distribution for the story shares, so that will be discussed in the video to follow. So stay tuned.